And then the log of a product of the argument becomes the sum of the logs of each argument. So that's 0 0.50 e equals negative 0 0.0592. Uh, the log of H plus plus the log of CL minus. Again, if you're not comfortable with logarithms, you could have just plugged the numbers in by this point. 0 0.50 equals negative 0 0.0592. What is the log of H plus? 4, that's the pH. And uh, it would be negative because pH is negative log H plus plus the log of Cl minus. And from here I solve for Cl minus. So the uh, 0. Uh, 0 0.50 divided by negative 0 0.0592. I'm going to add 4 to that. And that's going to be the log of Cl minus or the concentration of Cl minus will end up equaling 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Again, if you prefer a different solving style, that's totally fine. You could have done it less algebraically and just put the numbers in right away. However you get to the answer in a moral way is totally fine with me. So there's a the concentration of Cl. That was the next that was that part. That was kind of messy. This Nernst equation, that's the very typical type of question, so be comfortable manipulating that Nernst equation. Okay, next it says to find delta G. This one's quite a bit easier. Find delta G. Delta G is just minus N, F, E, uh, like that. And we're not finding delta G standard, we're just finding delta G. So delta G, that's minus N is 2 moles of electrons. That was from before. That's the moles of electrons that cancel out in the half reactions of the redox. F, that's a constant, 96,485. That'll be given to you. Uh, and then uh, E, that was measured at 0.77 according to the problem. So this is going to turn out to be minus 149,000. Joules, or if you want it in kilojoules, minus 149 kilojoules. So you notice, in fact, you didn't have to do the previous part of the problem in order to do this one. As soon as you know that E was 0.77, which was given, you could go through here. So this part is not connected to the previous part. Finally, uh, it asks us to draw this. This is something that probably without my help today, you wouldn't be able to do it, uh, which is fine. But now you can kind of learn how to do a more complicated drawing of a galvanic cell. Uh, and this has two or three complicated parts that you might not be used to. So uh, let me just draw the template first. We'll draw our half cells. Uh, we'll draw our salt bridge. We'll draw our uh, wire. Here we measure the voltage. Oops, oops. Like that. Uh, we've got our liquid. Okay, let me do the left hand side first, and that's the anode. We've got the cathode. We've got the salt bridge. Okay, so for the left-hand side, this is a left-hand side is a standard hydrogen electrode. So, uh, to do that, there's no metal, so we'll add our own metal. Uh, we'll add platinum solid. That's the electrode there on the left-hand side. Let me zoom in for this, so it's a little easier to see. Um, now, in this case, the reactant is H2. So in order to get a gas in here, if you haven't seen that before, take the H2 gas and you basically just draw an arrow from the outside and this is called bubbling. 
So I usually write the word bubble, uh, bubble the H2 gas into the reactant. Uh, that will react at the platinum electrode. An electron will be given off to go around this wire. And then uh, it'll form H plus aqueous in solution. So there's your hydrogen electrode. Uh, oh, our salt bridge, I'm just going to use KCl. I'm using Cl as an anion because there's Cl in the reaction. So whenever the reaction gives you an anion, that's usually what I use as a salt bridge. So use KCl. Now, this other side would have been pretty difficult to come up with without previous knowledge. But what happens is we're just actually going to stick this wire in the solution without a quote electrode as normal. And here's why. First of all, we have the several different pieces in here. We have Cl minus. If you look at your reaction, let me write the reaction out again. Here's the reaction. And solid um, plus mercury liquid, two of those, and two Cl minus aqueous. There's the cathode reaction. The problem is we have three things. This uh, mercury one chloride, we have the liquid mercury and the Cl minus. So what happens is you can't form this into electrode because it's a liquid. You can't go into a bar. This one's a salt. It can be like contained in something, but just like other salts, like sodium chloride, it's salt. So uh, what happens is, is this one actually forms some layers where the most dense, which mercury is extremely dense, it's going to sink to the bottom. Uh, the aqueous, so the liquid mercury will be even uh, more dense than the mercury 1 chloride, which is a solid. <coughs> and then the Cl minus aqueous would be the least dense. So since you might not know the densities of these solutions, you wouldn't know. But a solid is going to be more dense than an aqueous or a liquid usually, except for liquid mercury, which is very heavy. Uh, so essentially what's going to happen the electrons will come in, they'll react when they hit this center layer, uh, just like this says, and then it'll form liquid mercury, which will sink down to the bottom, and Cl minus aqueous, which will rise to the top. Uh, and there's the salt bridge. You can write it, or not the salt bridge, the galvanic cell. You can write it in shorthand also, if you so desire, and it will look like this. Salt bridge in the middle. Uh, on the left hand side you got platinum solid, vertical line, you've got uh, H2 gas, vertical line, and then you've got uh, H plus aqueous. On the right hand side you've got Cl minus aqueous, so what you do is you put aqueous closest to the center, then gases, then liquids, then solids. So that, then the liquid, then the solid. <coughs> and there's the sh shorthand, not so short version of writing the uh, 